Day 5 of the World Cup, let's go. So the first round of games is finally over, and overall, there's already one thing that has to be said. Not a single red card so far. It's literally the first time since 1986. Once again today, the games were really hit or miss. First of all, we got Switzerland versus Cameroon, where the most interesting thing of all was probably the fact that the only goal of the game was scored by Mbolo, who despite being born in Cameroon, scored for Switzerland. I did some digging and apparently his father still lives in Cameroon, so he was probably watching him like this. Besides that, there's not much else that can be said. Shakiri got the assist, which means he has been involved in half of Switzerland's goals over the last four tournaments. And Ian Sommer was player of the match, which is probably really deserved. That man is incredible, especially in the biggest of matches. Then we got the Uruguay versus Korea, which I was really hopeful for, because these three together, well, it just looks like everyone is begging for chaos. But in reality, the opposite happened. I mean, come on, if you've been watching the World Cup and my videos on it, just guess the results. A nil-nil draw, and just like I had predicted yesterday, we finally did it. No World Cup in history has had more goalless draws than this one. We managed to beat the one record that nobody likes. And honestly, that wasn't even the only disappointing record broken in that match. The game ended with zero shots on target. Zero. The only positive thing out of this game was that the result was pretty advantageous for Portugal. Thankfully, then Portugal and Ghana came to save the day and gave us possibly the most interesting match in the World Cup so far. Like honestly, sometimes it just seems like Fernando Santos is conducting some weird experiment to see how much pain he can put the Portuguese fans through. The moment Ronaldo started crying during the anthem, I was already sure this game was gonna be one hell of a ride. But then the first half almost convinced me otherwise. It was complete dominance. It was honestly like Portugal was playing Rondo with their younger cousins. We totaled 70% possession and Ghana managed zero shots on target. But still, we were pretty much creating no danger whatsoever. The most we got was two shots by Ronaldo, and well, none of them ended with a ball in the net, so it is what it is. But once the second half started going, it was insane. 20 minutes in, Ronaldo goes down to the ground and we get a penalty. It was a questionable call, sure, but it happened. Ronaldo buries it, of course, and that was the first goal out of four in the space of 15 minutes. Shortly after, the ball finds its way between Danilo's legs and Andre Ayu scores. And that's when the funniest moment of the match took place. Ayu is like immediately substituted and while he's literally still celebrating with his teammates on the bench, Portugal scores to go back in front to João Felix. My man did not look very happy. <laughs> And to make it all worse, just three minutes later, Rafael Leon doubles our lead and unlike Ayu, he looked oddly happy while scoring the goal. <laughs> These two goals were obviously a good reason to be happy for the Portuguese fans and it only got better since Felix and Leon were literally the third and fourth youngest ever players to score for Portugal at a World Cup. But unfortunately, that happiness didn't last much longer as a massive mistake by João Cancelo led to another goal by Ghana. Now, if there's one thing that I have to say about that goal is why would you waste time imitating Ronaldo's celebration when you're one goal down with one minute to go at the World Cup? That's like the one true weird flex. At least Ronaldo's reaction was pretty funny. And it wouldn't be a Portugal match without a moment where my heart pretty much stopped, so the Ocosta made me the favor of almost giving the ball away to Iñaki Williams in injury time. And if any of you are even minimally question yourselves how I reacted in that moment, you won't have to for much longer because I actually recorded it. So play the clip. <laughs> Yeah, Ronaldo was pretty much every one of us in that moment. Overall, I have to say, almost losing to the team with the lowest FIFA ranking out of anyone in the tournament wasn't really a good start, even if we did get the 3 points. Let's just hope that at least things are a bit more calm from now on. But before being done with this match, there's a few more things I have to say. Ronaldo made history today. Obviously, he was the first player to score in 5 different World Cups, but he also became only the second ever player to captain a team at the World Cup while being a free agent, and he became the player with the most Man of the Match awards at the World Cup ever. Which, I also have to say, is funny, because he was definitely not the Man of the Match. Obviously, I love Ronaldo, but today, he really wasn't at his best. 
Though, to be fair, this has been kind of a trend so far. Modric got the award the last time he played and he didn't seem like the best player on the field. Kevin De Bruyne got it as well and he literally made sure to say that he didn't know why he got it and that it was probably because of his name. And honestly, it seems the same happened to Ronaldo because there's no other reason to give him the trophy besides the fact that, well, he's Ronaldo. <laughs> But yeah, there's a conspiracy somewhere in there. Have fun, I guess. Then, if Portugal versus Ghana hadn't been enough fun for a day, we got Brazil versus Serbia. First of all, I gotta say what everyone has already said. Just imagine what it feels like to be defending for 70, 75 minutes against the likes of Vinicius Jr., Neymar, Rafinha, Richarlison, and then they get subbed off for the likes of Rodrigo, Anthony, Gabriel Jesus, and Martinelli. This is easily one of the most impressive squads of all time when it comes to attacking power, and that's without taking into account that they left Firmino and Gabigol out of the squad. But you know what was funny about this match? Richarlison is easily the one player out of all of those that gets discredited the most. I mean, just look at what this guy said midway through the match. No joke, just a few minutes after he tweeted that, Richarlison scored the opener in his World Cup debut. And if that wasn't enough to prove that guy wrong and made him feel like a dumbass, then he scored what was quite easily the goal of the tournament so far, and honestly, in my opinion, a great contender for the Puskas Award. You can say whatever you want about Richarlison, but ever since his debut for Brazil, he has scored more goals than any other player in the team. It's 19 already. He might as well just bring this haircut back, because he's looking like the reincarnation of Ronaldo. But before we move on from that goal, I have to say, that assist by Vinicius was amazing. It literally reminded me of something Quaresma would pull off. And if you're wondering what Neymar was doing, well, it was pretty much just being dragged around for the entirety of the match. Which, unfortunately, sooner or later, led to this. Yeah, it looks painful because it probably was. I saw a picture of his ankle and... It didn't look good, that thing was swollen. He was literally crying on a bench just a few minutes later. Let's just hope he's not out of the World Cup. And before any of you guys just start saying that he's a crybaby and all of that, keep in mind, he was fouled nine times during this match. Nine. But just keep in mind that the rest of the team altogether were literally just fouled three times. The most that a single player had been fouled so far in a single match throughout the whole tournament was Gavi just the other day, and he got fouled just five times, which is far away from Neymar's nine, and he didn't even get to play the full match. And yeah, I guess that was it for day number five of the World Cup, and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye. Oh yeah, I almost forgot, like the video and subscribe, it really does help a lot.